<laughs> now we get to the canon. Okay. What's a canon? And this is place. This is a place where a picture actually works. Okay. A canon consists of a bunch of odes, and each ode looks like this. We have a theme song called the Irmos. Okay, and you sing these at feast days, right? You're familiar with them, sort of. The Irmos is a song that connects one of nine canticles or hymns from the Old Testament with what's going to come next. So, for example, Ode 1 is always based on Moses' song on crossing the Red Sea, the hymn of victory, as the Israelites are fleeing from Egypt. So, Ode 1 will often talk about Moses, it will talk about fleeing our enemies, it will talk about conquering the devil, it will talk about Israel singing a hymn of victory. All, whoever, someone wrote this hymn, and they wrote it to start the rest of the ode, and they wrote a melody for it, and all the rest of the hymns that come after in that ode go to the same melody. If you learn a folk song, and someone teaches you the first verse, and then there are eight more verses, you don't need to learn more music, right? You sing every verse the same way. In Greek, this is exactly how it works. This is music for a piece of poetry, and then the next verses are probably about the saint of the day, or the resurrection, or all sorts of Christian themes. And so there's the irmos, and then there's a refrain, like, glory to your holy resurrection, O Lord, or we honor you, O Saint Nicholas, or something. And then there's another hymn called a Treparian, and this isn't music like the regular tones Treparian. This is sort of a different meaning of Treparian. It's just a hymn. And very often in our church, going back to a council in Russia around 1500, but possibly before, people realized, wait a second, when I translate these from Greek into Slavonic, suddenly I can't sing this to the same melody as that. And they wrote these wonderful longs, nominee chant melodies, but mostly they said, it doesn't work. So what people ended up doing was, they would sing the Irmos, and when I was a cantor in Morgantown, West Virginia, we started doing the matins, uh, bits of matins before the liturgy, and I would sing some of the Irmos singing, and people were really skeptical, and the priest was saying, I don't know. Suddenly a couple of the babas started singing, except I was singing in English at Christmas, and they were singing in Slavonic, but they remembered how that went. Wow. Okay, these were things that the people cued by the cantor, at least for the major feast days, often knew how to sing. And then the people would chant the refrain, because refrains are easy. Once you hear the refrain, you just keep singing it. And then the reader would straight chant whatever comes next. And you would just repeat this back and forth till you come to the end. And that's one ode. Okay? Now, there are, and then, so that's, that's Ode 1, and we skip Ode 2 outside of Lent, because Ode 2 is a song threatening the Israelites with dire punishments. <laughs> and it's really gloomy, and it's detailing all that's going to happen to you if you do not shape up. <laughs> and outside of Lent, we don't use that. So we go straight to Ode 3, and that's why on Easter, you notice they go from Ode 1 to Ode 3. And then, sorry, the Ode. <laughs> yeah, back to Ode 1. Ode 3 is the same sort of thing. And then Ode 4 and 5 and 6 and 7 and 8. And then toward the end, Ode 9 is always about the Mother of God. Because I said, these are from the Old Testament except the last one. The last one is the canticle of the Mother of God from Luke. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. So right before the end, we will sometimes sing... the canticle of the Theotokos. And then we will do Ode 9, which is usually connected. We always, whenever we have a series of prayers or hymns, the last one's usually for the Mother of God. And it's the same way. We go through all the odes, and the last one is for the Mother of God. And at the Divine Liturgy on Feast Days, we sing again the Treparian, which came from Vespers, and we sing the Kentuckian that came from Vesper, from Matins. And if it's a big feast, we go to the Ode 9 Irmos, 
and we sing it again at the Divine Liturgy. And what's that called in a Broadway show? I mean, you have reprise. reprise. You reprise, right? At the end, at the end of the show, you sing all the best songs. We do that with the Divine Liturgy. We take for every feast day, we take the best songs from the feast day and we sing them again in the Divine Liturgy. If, if for you know whether we were at Matins and Vespers or not. So that here and here is what a whole canon looks like. And as I said, usually we sing. People sing the refrain, and then the reader just da 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 da, da just sings on a single pitch, really simply. Now, there are two exceptions to that practice. One of them is on Easter. On Easter, we sing everything. We sing the Irmos. Anybody remember how part of the Paschal Canon goes? Well, if you look at the funeral in Bright Week, if you open this book, the, the, this is something that will probably come out in a second book from, with the funeral stuff. During Bright Week, we leave almost all of the funeral, funeral stuff out and we sing about the resurrection. So, for example, Ode 1. It is the day of resurrection. O people, let us be enlightened by it. So we go through, that's the Yermos. Okay, all the way through. Therefore we sing the hymn of victory. Refrain. Christ is risen from the dead. Now, in any other time, we just straight chant this next, but it's Easter. We're really glad, so we sing. Let us cleanse our senses that we may see the risen Christ. And then, at the end of it, we sing. Christ is risen from the dead. And then, let the heavens properly, and so on. We sing all of these things on Easter. Okay? And if you go back and look, you'll see a couple of things. You'll see the odes. You'll see there is no ode two. You'll see that Ode 9 is about the Mother of God, all the way through here like that. Okay? Now, until some time ago, that was the Easter was the only canon that we did that for. However, our people love to sing. And as a result, at some point, and no one is quite sure where at this point, we started singing the funeral canon the same way. So if you look at Ode 1 in the Parastas. Now, there are two possible canons. Remember one tone 6 and one in tone 8. This is the one in tone 6. And the melody goes like this. Now that is so easy that even though every Irmos has its own melody, every Irmos is practically unique, this particular canon, a couple of the odes all use the same melody and it was drop dead easy and at some point people decided anytime you don't know the music, use this one. That's why in the green book, for all the feast days, it has two melodies for Irmos. It has the simple one, which is just use this melody from tone 6, or it has the real one. Okay. And we've had enough music, new music, to learn with that that most people continue just to pick the easy one. We have recordings of all of them, but until the point where our people are really, really bored with the tone six utmost melody, we're going to continue to use this. And here, we use it for all the hymns of Ode 1. So let's look at page 26. When Israel walked on the waves of the abyss, Different times, 
which means you had to memorize everyone a little bit separately. And what the Music Commission has done is mostly either the long form or the short form of the ending, they pretty much used it, and it's just practice. And then the refrain, which in this case is sung by the priest, normally it would be the people, but the people are singing everything, so we swap places and let the priest take the refrains. O Lord, rest the souls of your departed servants. The noble martyrs in the heavenly bridal chambers beseech you, O Christ, to make the faithful ones whom you have transferred from the earth worthy to enjoy eternal and not individual notes. If you sing individual notes, it's choppy. Okay? So, just listen for a second. Worthy to enjoy eternal good things. Every note is not hit as hard. Okay? It tends to be every other one. It just takes practice. But once you learn this ending, it's the same way on all of them. And then the priest... O Lord, rest the souls of your departed servants. When you arrange all things, you fashion me a composite living creature, lowly and lofty alike. Let's try one more time. 
normally, you'd have O1 and you'd have O3, and after O3, you would have some sessional hymns. We just sang those. And then you'd have Odes 4 and 5 and 6, and then we'd have a cantatia. That's where the hymns got inserted. Now, in the old book, you'd have to switch past the omitted odes. And here, they've decided to say, we're going to do 189, <coughs> so we're just going to do it straight through. So let's sing the Kentuckian. With the saints all arise, give rest to your servants. Where is the pains of for the deceased who didn't sing with the Trocaria. This is where a Kentuckian goes. Now, the Kentuckian was another kind of poem, liturgical poem. In fact, what it was was a liturgical sermon, sometimes called a madrasa, and you might recognize like the name of the Islamic school. Where that's before Arabic, in Syriac, in Lebanon and in Syria and in other parts of the Near East, the priests would chant their homilies. They would write them out like poetry. They were Middle Eastern people. They'd like this sort of thing, culture, a long time back. And they would you would chant the first part, and then the last line would be a really catchy one, which everyone would then repeat as a refrain. Okay? So, for example, I might preach on the resurrection. And I might preach and, uh, for like eight lines and I would say, but for us Christ is risen from the dead. And everyone would say, but for us Christ is risen from the dead. And I'd go on with some more of the sermon and then they would do it again. It's very structured, very uh, conversational. And these kind of long poems, which were called Kentakia, might have 12 or 20 or 24 verses. There were canons in the liturgy and the scope of space. Now, there's just one of these that we still have in our service. Anyone ever sung the Akathist hymn? The Akathist hymn to the Mother of God is one of these poems. Okay? And it's got that Alleluia refrain and yeah, Hello Bride and Maiden. Yeah, that's the refrain. That's a big Kentuckian. Now, over time, the liturgy evolved. And this Kentuckian, which actually, just like the canon has this odes and Traparian refrains, a Kentuckian had a stanza and a second thing called an ecos and another stanza. What ha and these usually had the same refrain, same ending. What they did was they said, you know what, we used to sing 20 verses of this Kentuckian. And we're not using it anymore, but we're just going to sing the first two. We're going to sing the first Kentuckian and the first Ecos. And we're going to sing it at Matins. And that's what we have here. And the reason I'm giving you this history is to explain why. With the saints, all oh Christ is the Kentuckian. And then the Ecos is for the cantor or for the reader. Just recites. You alone are a mortal creator and maker of humanity. We mortals were formed out of earth, and we will return to the same earth as you, my maker, commanded when you said to me, You are dust and shall return to dust, where all mortals will go. And you flip the page, and there's a special melody which once went with the Katakian for the dead. Singing as our funeral hymn, Alleluia. And then everybody sings the refrain, Alleluia, Uh, if you rush it, 
he's just going to keep swinging that sensor along after you've done. So we tell people, don't sing. And you sang it exactly the same way we tell, the same pe tempo, we tell people here to sing it at the Divine Liturgy. Guess what? At a funeral, you're not waiting for anything. So you can actually sing it more like this. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Maybe 20%, 25% faster than you did. Okay? And it moves, it feels different. It sounds different from it does in the Divine Liturgy, even if it's exactly the same notes. Okay? So what I'm saying is here, don't, si don't sing it intentionally slow. Okay, I would like just to practice once because this is something, guess what? This is a cantor solo at the top of 32. You don't get many of those. Okay, so practice this. Singing as our funeral did.
That's to some extent the value of writing these melodies consistently. It takes some time to adapt if you're used to each different setting of the hymns, but it works. And again, in in the full funeral and parastas books, when they finally come out, Ode 8 will probably be one of those places where an entire piece could either be included or excluded, depending on timing, the priest, the situation, and so on. But it will be, you know, that much. You say, with, you know, turn to page 36 of the night. So now we go to the Mother of God. It is impossible for mortals to see God. Thank 
Because really, the Bright Week funeral just is Easter hymns. Yeah. And whether you're using, it, to some extent, if you're using the, our current Holy Week books from the seminary press with the old translations, then you're almost better off using the Bright Week funeral from the old book, even if we change the regular funeral. Okay? Anything else? Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you.